Today I have received the very first Chinese Mini ITX X99 motherboard. So let me open the package and then we can take a look at the motherboard. As you can see the motherboard was packed rather well, we have the motherboard box inside another box and that one was wrapped in a rather thick plastic. Inside the box we get a useless warranty card, because I think this warranty applies only inside China. Then we of course have the IO shield, a SATA cable, some extra washers, and the motherboard itself. And here is the motherboard itself. What I can say immediately is that this LGA2011 socket is not the standard square socket. It is the rectangular one when one side is longer than the other side. What is a bit disappointing is that the motherboard does not come with the mounting bracket, so it is not possible to install the clip on CPU coolers. You would have to buy a CPU cooler which can be screwed on top of these uh, mounting holes and you need the rectangular one, not the square one. From the specs we can see that the motherboard has almost everything we could wish for. Of course it would be nicer to have four SOD slots for quad-channel memory configuration, but for mini ITX motherboard two memory slots is pretty good. Then we have M.2 slot for Wi-Fi expansion cards, we have USB 3.0 for the front panel, we have USB 2.0 for the front panel, audio for the front panel and uh, this one I think is a debug LED. This one is for TPM or Trusted Platform Execution Module, but I don't know which module would be compatible with this connector. Then we have uh, two SATA ports here, four SATA ports here, these are front panel buttons, then we have two fan connectors, both are four pin fan connectors over here. And here we have a small speaker, I don't know if it is noisy or not noisy. Here we have one extra 4-pin fan connector and the standard 24-pin uh, power connector and the 8-pin CPU power connector. One weird thing is this some sort of a glue spot over here, maybe it was some sort of a sticker here and it left some glue, but it should not affect the performance. Also here is some sort of a switch, I'm not sure what it is going to switch, maybe it is switches to the M.2 functionality, but I will have to figure out what it does. For now let me take a look at the socket itself and see if I get any bent pins there. The socket seems to be completely okay, I do not see any damages, so I hope that the motherboard works just fine. Now let's take a look at the rear side I.O. Chinese keep adding these PS2 ports even though I believe they are rather useless. Then we have some sort of a button, I hope this is clear CMOS button, but I don't see any titles. Uh, this jumper is definitely clear CMOS because there is a title, so I think this is a clear CMOS. Then we have a USB Type-C connector, I believe this is the standard USB 3.0 speed, just in different form factor. Then here we have four USB 2 ports and two network ports. What's interesting is that the seller specifies that these are 2.5G network adapters. Of course I will have to figure out how to test them because I do not have a 2.5G router. Finally we have only two standard USB 3.0 ports and this giant 7.1 uh, audio exit. What audio microchip is used on the motherboard I am yet to discover, but since it is 7.1 audio I hope it's not the cheapest Realtek codec. What is this I'm not quite sure, it seems like I'm supposed to connect the battery here, but instead of making some sort of a battery placeholder Chinese just added these two wires which are just cut off and if you do not bother to somehow isolate them, they can even short. So I will have to figure out if it is indeed battery connector, I would have to figure out how to attach the battery here, so the BIOS CMOS settings are preserved. On the back side of the motherboard we have one more M.2 slot, and this one is for the SSD drives. It's supposed to be PCI Express 3.0 x4. Well, as you can see, this is a rather interesting and very well-packed Mini ITX X99 motherboard from China. It also feels pretty decent and it also looks rather nice. So if you're interested to see a full detailed review of this motherboard, then welcome to subscribe to my main channel. For now, thanks for watching and bye-bye.